Welcome everyone to Idea Me, the show that interviews the world's trailblazers and innovators moving the human story forward. I'm Tali Ramsey, an Idea Me guest interviewer and writer that specializes in tech, futurism, culture and society. Today I'm joined by Effie Ezekiel, a youth mentor who's been awarded a British Empire Medal by the Queen, an inspirational speaker and creator of youth mentoring company You Shine, I Shine. So Effie, if you'd like to um, introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your work. Okay, thank you for the very kind introduction. Um, I'm Effie, um, Effie Ezekiel. I'm the youth mentoring and working with young people for over a decade, 11 years. I think it's been even longer. I started when I was in my teens. Um, and just making sure the basis of my company, You Shine, I Shine, is just to make sure that young people are happy, um, fulfill their potential, um, look at the world in new perspectives and dimensions, and are able to showcase the best of themselves, not only to the world, but, you know, realise who they are in themselves and go out into the world as confident full-rounded human beings in the 21st century. So that's what I do. So the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in mass unemployment and job uncertainty for many. That with the Black Lives Matter protests have shown us that we're at a global tipping point. Hmm. The world is waking up to institutional and systemic racism and the pressured points of society are exasperating. Uh, this is all while we're dealing with the ongoing climate disaster and experts are predicting we only have six months left to save the planet. The Great Reset, initiated by the World Economic Forum in partnership with Prince Charles, is calling for a reset of capitalism in favour of stakeholder and sustainable capitalism. The Great Reset is advocating for a greener, fairer and smarter society that focuses on the interdependence of all living things and wants to utilise tech to make sure that services such as care services, education services and health services never go underfunded again. So they're going to meet in January 2021 at their summit to discuss the Great Reset. But issues such as racism, climate change, equality and empathy, how do you teach and educate young people about those issues? Oh, wow. We've got some big issues there. It all kind of sounds like doom and gloom, doesn't it, really? <laughs> so first off, um, my most important thing is that I teach, um, not even teach, I encourage and support any positive optimism, um, any sense that there is going to be a joy, a, a point of joy within all of this um, complex dynamics of um, the pandemic or climate change, racism, you know, all these things that are quite heavy, not uh, um, incredibly, you know, depressing, but in them there can be, there, there is a sense of hope because what now that it's been addressed, um, we can start looking at how we can find solutions. So I teach young people not only about hope and having faith and positivity, but making sure that they realise that they are great problem solvers. And that is exactly what the world is looking for via tech or farming or the way that we're learning to use our platforms to speak out on injustice and inequality. Um, so for me, all of this stuff, it, it, you know, it is really heavy, but you need to be able to show young people that there are examples. There are adults out there who are supporting change and using whatever um, resources that they have to make the world better for themselves and for the young people who are coming behind us. So for me, it's, it's, it is truly a reset and we must be grateful for that because, you know, everybody's calling this time a new normal and nothing was ever normal. The way we were living was not correct. It hasn't been correct, especially for people of colour or people who have been put into the category of other, the disenfranchised, the economic inequalities, um, all of those things, they weren't right so now is the time for us to make sure that things do start being right and equal and fair and just and how empowering 
and wonderful and it's I think it's actually quite a magical time because I think people are ready and they're listening and for me I'm excited um I know it's hard for many people and they're like why why is she excited for I'm like mate if we're talking about it it means that there's lots of great work to be done so you better roll up your sleeves get into it because life will now be ready to serve you. So, you know, I talk in philosophical terms as well, you know, the way that people are starting to think about how we can really truly support one another and have empathy and compassion. You know what? I actually need to be at that summit because we also need to have voices, more voices like mine. You know, I realize how powerful I am and um, that's what I want for other people. And I know if I go to that summit, you probably won't see many women there. You probably won't see many black people um black people there people of color which i hate that term but people from other um races will call they'll call us bane and and the minority and all that nonsense i'm not the minority i'm the majority so um and i'm part of the majority so yeah let's get into that summit let's that that's where it that's where we can really transform things and get the children in as well because these uh people have been doing it before then they're not doing it the way that should be done. All right, yeah, so let's get excited. I suppose that with crisis, is, uh, there's a great chance for transformation. Mm. Uh, and societally, that's what we need right now. But uh, for many young people, they have been facing mental health crisis for a while now. And we've seen this exasperated by social media uh, and just the economic climate in general. So experts and doctors are predicting that this crisis will have long-term effects for mental health in young people. How do you think that they can be helped? What needs to be done for them mentally? I've been sprouting and espousing this for the decade that I've been doing it. People used to laugh at me. There wasn't a term say, saying self-care or, you know, really understanding that well-being was truly incredibly important. And so I used to walk into schools or email schools and people be like, what are you talking about? Our children, and I think adults as well, have been suffering from silent um, mental health issues um, for, 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 it's a centuries old thing. However, now that we have the arena to address it, we've, we're, we've, we're like, oh yeah, this is what we need. They've been talking about it since, you know, a few years ago. And now we've had something on top of that to exacerbate the issues that we have, the idea of confinement, because lockdown is not a fun word. It's not a positive word. That's what you put prisoners in. All right. So we've all been in a personal prison and some of us have been in a beautiful one where we've been at home. But many young people may be in circumstances and situations where not only their mental health, but their well-being and sense of security, um, nourishment um, has been um, really um, corroded. And so what can we do now? I think as a community, you know, this is going to be quite controversial, but we do need to get our children back into education. Children routine is good for young people. All right. It's good for adults, too, um, in a safe way. And then we need to make sure I've been saying this for many years. Every young person needs a mentor, an official one, a one that is good, one that is trained up, who will then guide them and support them. And I'm talking about trained mentors, not ones who, you know, oh, yeah, I'm going to mentor you for weeks. So you get a good work experience placement. I'm talking about one that um, will go in and make sure that the child is well rounded and looked after. I think we need to have more therapists in schools and colleges and universities. Um, I think we need them for parents as well and any caregivers. I think we all kind of need someone that we can turn to and look, look, look upon. So for me, um, I think young people are very resilient in my, in my case. And, you know, I know that we, they will have a lot of issues, but I think they'll be able to get over them if they've got the right help in place. So we need to think how we as um, a community, um, as a country, as a world, can put those provisions in place for all the young children so or, and young people so they have someone to turn to when they're having breakdowns from anxiety or stress or just even, you know, a, a sense of low self-esteem because they don't believe any opportunities are there because of the econ economic um, situation that we have at the moment and not being able to get a job. So, yes, that's what I believe. Mm. Yeah, I think um, you're right about actually having trained mentors and therapists who are specialised in that area to really go in and help young people. A big point of the Great Reset is... Uh, addressing this ever-growing gap between rich and poor. 
uh, in the US, for example, US senators were accused of insider trading during the pandemic and the, uh, the wealthy elites actually saw their wealth increase by billions during the pandemic. So this whole crisis is just showing how much we need to address it and how it's actually on the increase. You were featured in the Financial Times for your work with young working class male students. As well as societal change, how can young people, specifically from working class and underprivileged backgrounds, believe that they have what it takes to succeed in the world? Well, I think a lot of that starts with, um, if, it, if it doesn't start with parenting at home, getting them in front of people who, um, have a sense of um, sense of self, a sense of understanding how um, economics works in the world, um, teaching them about the power of money, um, because a lot of us haven't had that training. We don't even know how to get a mortgage, let alone what percentage rates are this in APRs, annual percentage rates on, on buying cars. We don't even buy cars. All of it, we realise that we're in a lending system. And that's why most people in this country are in debt. So um, understanding all of those economic terms will then empower young people to understand why they're spending their money, the type of jobs that they want. You know, a lot of young people say, I'm going to be rich. And then you ask them how. Winning the lottery. Now, how many people win the lottery? Come on now. So for me, um, the work that I do with young people from all different backgrounds, but especially with ones who are underprivileged, which I hate that word. I hate anything like that, because once you start thinking you're underprivileged in your mind, that's how you will then start to address your life. So I teach them that they're incredibly privileged. I teach them that they're incredibly talented, but they start need to plan out how they want to see their lives and where they're going to go. And then once you know where you're going, that's when you can start living the economic life that you deserve, you know, because, you know, money is absolutely everything. And I wish I'd had the instruction um, about how money works because I would have made a lot, of, lot better decisions about my career and the jobs I took and the payments that I, that I, allowed myself to take instead of going for the higher higher goal so um yeah it's just teaching children money <laughs> it's simply and how it works and that's why the rich get richer because they know about investments equity you know and the poor get poor because we, we all we know is how to to accrue debt or accrue debt yeah i think learning about finances from as young as possible is definitely important which takes me to my next point, which is about institutional change. So obviously mm. with the Black Lives Matter protests, there's been a lot of calls to defund the police. Um, in Minneapolis, nine members of the council have vowed to dismantle the police in favour of a more community-based system of public safety, which at the moment we don't know what that actually means. But a lot of the campaigning is around allocating the funds that would go into the police into youth services, education, um, and things that can empower communities, especially communities of colour and black communities. Also in the UK, there's been calls to put black history on the UK curriculum. So uh, how do you think schools can be funded? Like you mentioned earlier that schools should be, like children should be getting back into school as quickly as possible. You know, why uh, do we have a pandemic and all the schools are closed down? How can schools be reformed or changed in any way to help uh, young people thrive in society, do you think? I think there's lots of reform. I think just first in the curriculum, how it's taught. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of ways that we can add more creativity, more movement in there. Those are the really simple things that I'd work on. Um, the way that we learn, um, I, for me, it's about understanding that we are not, I don't believe what our children are prepared for the 21st century you know ai is very prevalent that's coming into effect now um the way that young people learn and you know the power of of um technology companies and the way that we're taught and what we're into is it needs to be tied in our children need to be prepared for the new jobs that are coming out into the world and so that's why education really needs to change it's so based in 19th century um literature and language and kids are making up their own language do they even speak anymore no they use emojis you know so and memes um you know so we need to and gaming that's another really brilliant way that we can get our young people to learn so for me I really, you know, I'd, I'd literally dismantle it from, from the ground up. 
um, and start again. That is what a proper reset is. Of course, black history is so important in, in the history of the world, right? It, let's, just, let's just break it down. You know, I know that if I knew my history when I was growing up, it, it would completely change the way I saw my world. My mum used to give me lips a bit. She'd be like, you know, you know, our heritage, um, Egyptian and, you know, we were queens. And, you know, that was my mum was a proper, you're kings and queens. And then when I got to, into my early 20s, I started learning. And, and I'm like, the stuff I learned blew my mind. And I know that if not only black children had this at their um, the core of learning, but all other um, young people from every single um, facet of life had this. I think there would be more equality, more understanding of one another, more appreciation of the value and input that young, that black and African and Afro-Caribbean people have added value to this world. It would be enormous. Um, but then also we need to um, dismantle it and change it and reset it because, you know, I want more... Um, gender neutral roles you know we're getting into the world where you know they're really having um you know transgender kids who are trying to identify themselves um young people coming out with lots of different um ways that they want to express themselves so giving them a platform to do that is very important so for me um you know dismantling i think this most most structures need to be dismantled forget if it's just the police education finance um engineering sciences that you, you, you kind of all need to set the reset all of them for, for us to have a, a, a new sense and be ready for the world that's coming, the, the future that we want for, for our children, the future I want for my children. I'm talking now, not just the children that I have, I'm talking about my children as all the children, you know? So, and I think if we saw that, if we kind of realised that's the goal, I think it would change all our perspectives. So yes, I'm up for changing everything at the moment and uh, maybe re removing economics so everybody gets a fair share um, of, of the money so we can do great things in our community. For me, that is, it's like a no-brainer, really. An absolutely no-brainer. Yes, I think it's so important for, because young people are the future, for schools to teach everything and accurately. And mm. obviously, not just about black history, but all history. And I think gender is an important point because young people feel more comfortable expressing their gender identity. So that needs to be reflected in the curriculum too. So millennials have lived through two recessions and Gen Z are just graduating now as this crisis is taking place. Obviously, they're going to be facing smaller employment opportunities and job uncertainty. For some young people, trust in the in governments and media is eroding slightly and a lot of young people are turning to the internet and social media to fuel their activism so on social media some companies are boycotted and called out news of protests are spread on social media as well as how to protect yourself at protests how do you think trust in society can be instilled in young people if it's not already there so trust is such a it's such a tricky word dear um and a lot of the time we've realized that a lot of the stuff, the information that we've had previously has always been skewed. Everything has a bias and a conscious bias to it. So once you realize that, you always look at where the information's coming from. And I do believe that millennials and Gen Z now have that opportunity to really go in depth and research and understand what is this that I'm looking at? Why has the person sent it? You know, why is the news outlets giving me this version, but I'm looking on social media and getting another view of it or seeing a little bit more of, of the footage that then, you know, makes me realise that there's a bigger picture going on or maybe an agenda. So um, for me, trust is one of the most important things. But as uh, Lauren Hill, quite, you know, listen, uh, I don't know if you know Lauren Hill, she's in your spectrum, the, one of the greatest MCs of all time and singers. You know, most people can't even trust themselves. So how, how you know, trust is such a um, kind of, I, I don't, it's kind of a bin binary word because it's so out there. What, what, what is, you know, what is trust? Who can we trust? Sometimes um, the information that we have is, is placed 
in truth and fact, but then can be mis, mis, misconstrued or misused. So I think it's quite a hard time for young people because things can be doctored. We have AI now, stuff like deep fakes. So what is the truth? And I think um, at the end of the day, you know, one of the things that I tell young people is that if you're an honest person, if you try and do good, it will always, it will always be, you know, look, look at the history of someone and, and the history on context of the news source or the information. And if there's a, you know, if, if they've laid a, a legacy of which they are trustworthy for you, then that's kind of the path that you go by. But, you know, sometimes people are trusted, maybe sometimes they're not. People are human. Um, it's, it's quite a hard one. And I think, yeah, you just have to go by your instinct, really. So, and trust, I think trust may be eroded in a lot of the people that we see in power, because we know sometimes their power is based on connections, networks, what they can do for themselves, affiliations, money. Um, so it's, it really is just feeling like if someone has a cause that, you're, that you care about, then invest in them. If they don't, then don't. And I think that's what I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot in young people and I like it. It's nice, you know, um, and, it, and it calls people out. And that's what we that's what we want. Not in a horrible way. We want to educate people and teach them and show them what it is to be truthful and trustworthy. And because when you gain that, you literally gain the whole world. Right. So um, I, I, I use entertainment stars just because I like them. And one of my favorites Who's one of my favourites? I think, you know, everyone loves Will Smith, right? Regardless of what age you are, regardless of, you know, what demographic you are, people like Will Smith. And why? Because his character is consistent. He literally is a brand unto himself because of his character being consistent, truthful, wise, that wisdom. And I think that's what we're all looking for. You know, it may be in a book, it may be on social media, it may be an influencer, but that's what people are looking for and someone that they can kind of see themselves in. So, um, yeah. And I don't think it's that hard for millennials or Gen Z. I think it's a hard time, but you've never had more opportunity to maybe not get a job and start your own business. So for me, I'm like, it may be a little bit hard, but you know what? Older ones have had it a little bit harder. All right. So you ain't doing too bad. The technology is there for you to create something great. So, um, yeah, take your opportunities now. Right. Yeah, I think I think technology and social media, as much as they there might be issues with them, like deep fakes and, you know, all the kind of things going about Instagram and low self-esteem. Uh, the opportunities that they provide can arguably override the disadvantages. And I think going into the future, it's all about tech-enabled jobs. So do you think that young people should have a bigger role in society? I know for a while people have been talking about lowering the voter, voter age. And then obviously there's uh, teenagers like Greta Thunberg <coughs> who spoke at Davos and, you know, she's doing amazing things. Do you, do you think there should be more young people encouraged, like we should listen to them? Oh, I, this is what I, this is my philosophy on life, you know, because um, young people have a completely new perspective. The way that I saw um, kids from all different backgrounds come out for Black Lives Matter and how Greta's there saying, come on, you adults, get yourselves together. You know, for me, that's beautiful. And of course, there should be more young people having a world stage to speak. I'm like, you guys know everything. You are like the wise little Yodas of the world. Um, but I also want, I want young people to realise that that you know you've never had a time where you young people have had to speak we've always been quiet or told to be quiet um so you are very very lucky and have a lot of opportunity where you are and this is your time so you know claim it proclaim it and understand that you are very very fortunate because there's so many people standing in your corner uh you know um sharing sharing opportunities and platforms with you so it's it really is in your hands to grab it now and you can all create something you've got youtube you've got instagram you've got tiktok you don't even just have to dance on tiktok you can you know do so many great things on there you know you just have the internet highway to to create such great things so you know what it's a good time for you don't feel sorry for yourself get 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 the 
get get going because you have a lot of lot of older people and adults that will support you in this you lucky generation you yeah i suppose i suppose there are definitely a lot of advantages yeah it depends on how you look at it like optimism is important so if you could do a project uh, and obviously i know you that this is your job and you work with young people all the time but if you could do a project pertaining to the great reset with young people what would that project look like or who would you want to work with in regards to that that's beautiful isn't it so if I had the you know I do have the power so my intention is to you know work with lots of young people around the world um, I'd love to have some um, world leaders in there I'd love to have some people young influencers um, you know people from the entertainment world because we know they have a lot of power in the music or the films that they put out and just get them together so we can just talk about the issues in the world and how we can solve them it really isn't a hard thing it's really easy um, and actually then action them properly and you know who I want in there I want some of those you know people with a lot of money who can um you know fund and support and sponsor a lot of the great things that i have planned to do um because this really is um it's boring that we're still talking about racism it's boring that we don't have enough opportunities for people that have disabilities it's boring that um trans and lgbtq community still have to um tell people that love is love i'm like come on now right it's boring that we still have the same people running all the media and trying to disseminate you know stories that aren't true or inaccurate you know it's, it's just boring that you know the polar bears aren't you know being looked after and we're not looking after climate just simply by switching off our lights a little bit earlier or throwing rubbish in the bin it's really just boring and I just think come on now pull your boots bootstraps up and let's do something really great in the world which serves not just the young people but other others you know I've still got a lot of life in me you know so <laughs> I want the world to be good for me too as well as the young people so uh let's do that let's stop talking it's boring and let's get some work done so talk talk for a little bit and then let's get some let's get to, let's get to working let's get to working and having more women and more women from um of, of color and um you know and let's start, you know, there's a feminism and all of that. But I'm like, let's just be humanists and really look after one another, regardless of what we, our identities are. So that's what it is, really, you know? Yeah. Do you, do you have a lot of faith in, in young people and the younger generation? Oh, I have the greatest faith. I wouldn't do the job I'd do if I, you know, um, I, I, I say my greatest passion and love is seeing um, young people and being in their presence and listening and learning from them and be able to give them a little bit of education from, from my life. You know, I have the greatest trust. I have the greatest faith um, and, and positivity. And they've literally given me joy for over 10 years. So I feel like I'm one of the most luckiest women in the whole world. Um, and, uh, and I literally can't wait to do more work with young people. Um, and see the way that they're going to make the world a really lovely, lovely place. So, yes, I'm very excited. And when I have my own kids, I'm really excited about them being able to be raised by all the lovely young people that I've, I've helped support in the world. So I think, you know, I, I, I didn't want to have, I didn't want to be, you know, um, a mother until I was able to maybe mother and, and teach, teach children who weren't mine, because I think that's probably one of the greatest mothering that you can do, children who aren't yours. So yes, I do. In our, sorry, in, in answer to your question. Well, thank you for joining me today uh, and taking part in this really important conversation on how young people can step it, get the best out of the future that we're stepping into. Mm. Things need to change. And because they're the next generation, it's the onus is unfortunately on them in collaboration with older people of course and the world leaders so thank you for having me it was an absolute delight thank you